we've got the VCR that we were looking at last time, and I thought, why don't we take the electronics from this, since we know that that works, and put it onto one of the other VCR's mechanisms to see if we can determine what was the problem with those other VCRs, if it was a mechanical issue or electronic issue. Let's just test this one again just to make sure that it's good because we want to make sure that we're starting with something that does work. I got the overlay thing to come up properly scaled now so the picture won't be distorted. And I've also found a more exciting tape than whatever that was we were looking at last time. Much more exciting. And I think that, well, there might have been something wrong with the tape. Well, I changed the monitor that I've got here anyway, and that is showing a clearer picture. It doesn't have that tearing at the top, so that might have been the monitor that was causing that, but it might have also been the tape. Uh, so, so there was no flickering like what we saw last time there. Let's put the tape from last time in as well just to see what that looks like because yeah it was pretty terrible looking on them the actual monitor okay it looks stable up there on the capture but yeah on the monitor it's f shaking a little bit so yeah, I guess the sink is and not quite good enough for the monitors to lock onto. This Panasonic monitor seems to be doing a better job at it. Let's now, we've proven this works, which is good. We'll switch that off for now. We'll take, unplug that. So we're going to get all of the electronic stuff out of the VCR, poke it into the other one that we haven't yet taken the cassette mechanism off of because yeah, we don't want to... We'll start with something that's easy before we look at trying to do the redo the timing on that. Uh, we might run out of time to do that retiming business for the other one that we pulled the cassette loading mechanism off. I'm not sure. We'll see how that goes. I want to do a video where we try and redo all the gears, but we might run out of time today. We'll see. We're going to unplug all the stuff. I was thinking maybe we'd get the mechanism out, since it is only a couple of screws that hold that in. Would that be a good idea? Oh, we might as well. We haven't really got anything to lose, have we? These machines were for scrapping anyway, so it doesn't really matter if they don't end up in a good condition after this. There's these larger M4 looking screws. Front go in from the front, and then there's this one at the back, which is a self-tapping style whatever thing for plastic and then that whole mechanism should lift out there is a cable guide clamp thing oops there was okay that's not very flexible anymore yeah the plastic's all gone brittle because it's so old and then we've got connection off the head amp there oh perhaps we should keep that on and we'll just get the other We'll keep this head amp because we know that one works. And we've got to take it off anyway to access the uh, motor connection there for the head drum. So we'll keep that connected, we'll keep that part. Just unplug that. We've got to get the. This which goes into the mechanism. Just picks up a bunch of stuff. I think that does the capstan motor, maybe. No, it doesn't. Different wire for that. Got the one that goes to the audio head, which is this double, double thing. What does that undo at the other end? It does. So perhaps we'll just leave that at the undoing at the other end. That's cable tied. How easily can we get that out? It probably just passes through. Uh, Alright, let's cut that cable tie off and we'll unplug that from this end. I've got here, I've been 
got this running from my live stream Lucario there and the hand tracking is working a lot better now since I adjusted the settings of the leap motion tracker thing which is just up there and I noticed it's doing a very good job of just grabbing a cable tie for cutting it so there you go, does that cheapen the video? anyway, let me know so with freed oh, from that excitement I cut the wrong cable tie anyway there we go, now we can get this wire out which is the head drum motor I guess the shielded ones for the feedback since that's high frequency and brown wires so this is the good electronics so we're going to keep that oh I thought we were replacing this oh where's that screw there okay I guess we're just dismantling everything this wasn't really planned in any way I just started recording it after putting the VCR here and we're working it out as we go along so that is a good mechanism now that we're pulling that out, we can keep this wire. That's a good mechanism. We'll just put that aside for a moment and we'll grab the other one that we don't know and we're going to investigate. I need somewhere to... Every bench or workspace is completely full of stuff at the moment, which is usual. So I don't know where to put this. We're not going to get grease all over the place. It will go upside down on the floor. Okay, we don't need that at the moment. So we're going to take the mechanism out of this one, which is also the one we borrowed the head from, but I got this other head which is maybe good enough. So let's do the same thing with this to get the mechanism out. That is quite good. Okay, let's look at that one more time. I undoing a undoing the screw actually got the finger movement there okay good so at the moment we don't know whether it's an electronics problem or a mechanical problem just cut those oh we don't need to because we're lifting oh we do need to because we're keeping the one on the audio head because that goes through a little... oh this one's different I, don't know, I think it's just popped out okay so we could have unplugged that okay lift that out oh, I've got the earth wire again now yeah, that flex is being quite munted so people have probably taken that off or maybe I did several times before and it's got a bit destroyed so there's this grounding wire here which stays with the chassis oh why don't we just pull this away and bring in the other electronics that's, that's even easier oh we won't mount a heat up into this okay we'll get a head in here really dirty everything's all dirty I'll clean that head a bit before I stick it in since it's got dirt all over it it's quite noticed fingerprints and things on it probably from pulling it out and maybe this is a little bit in vain but let's just go over the areas that the tape lay it rays on lays on and they're pretty dirty and then you're gonna watch using a tissue and the heads because it will that will rip fibers off and with the head gap so just be careful there we'll clean it properly once we get it installed well I'm going to dirty it again by putting it in so I'm going to have to do that this, oh we did get it all ready to take out so it'll be easier to work on another ground wire that's the, thing. the problem is that that sticks down quite a lot so we got to leave it in something or we got to prop it up to run it so let's just leave it in this housing for now and we'll just lay this in and do that without wrecking it 
Oh, actually, I just noticed there's another plastic peg which locates the head. Since last time I said there was only one, but there's two. And now we got to find some screws. Put the screws all in a bag from last time. The ones that went to the head were the same style with the captive washer on them. I can see two of there. Those guys. That two will be enough to hold it in place. But we don't lose one and we touch that grease again. It probably happened when I'm cleaning it. Remembering that the mechanism isn't screwed in now. Oops, and it's falling out. Hopefully this will be a quick edit so we get it out on time tomorrow night. Uh, where does the other screw go? Okay, there's a screw. Enough to try it out anyway. So let's get this, which is the good one. I know it's the good one because it's got the power supply on it. The only one with a power supply. I wonder if we're going to mess something up here because I don't know... Oh no, this is the other G21 Electronics, which... Oh. Yes, this is... The... It's G21 Electronics because it's got that keypad on the door. Um, it's the G21 mechanism because it stays right there. So we're not cross-contaminating anything yet. Plugs into there. The audio is there. We've got the cassette loading mechanism. With this flex cable. Much better than that wire one that they got going to the power supply because it's actually got a like a stabilizing rigidity tab thing on it, whatever they call that. Now I got that quite a lot of wires one which goes down to there. Oh, it must go to these sensors, the solenoid and the mode switch because there's a flex board there that comes off that piece. Just wondering why it's got a, a shielded core in it. Oh, there's also a dew sensor. Okay. Head amp. Okay, we'll clean the head better properly. Got a strip of paper there. Okay, so that should be alright. We'll lay this down. Make sure we got all the wires in. Get them out of the way of that stuff so that it can sit. Then moderately okay, join up the video cable and we'll power it up. And I think we'll try with this other, the original test tape because I'm not concerned about wrecking that one since we already wrecked it to some degree. And let's see what this does. Back on that overlay. So we can see if it does anything good. We'll just check. Fast forward, yes, rewind, mm, yes, not well to get there, oh yeah, one of the mechanisms didn't have that idle thing, I guess it's not this one, so we're into play, oh we got a perfect picture, so that must mean that the electronics of that other G21 were dodgy. Well, there you go. So the there must be something on the electronics. That was the reason why it didn't want to go when we tried it. Because I remember it was extremely erratic. Well, I can't remember which was which, but one of them had some erratic behavior. And the other one, which maybe was a G20, tried to start, but then just kind of ground up. Like, went and got stuck. And then wouldn't do anything, we need to manually eject the tape. Anyway, I can't remember which one was which. But that says we've got another good VCR mechanism here that works. That's nice to know. It doesn't need re-timing, which is also good. Although, we should do that on the other one. Let's see if we can get that going. Let's just try another tape just for fun. It's being coloured in red with permanent pen. Oh, what was that noise? Oh, I can see there's dirt on that roller there. 
That's not very nice. There is a, a thing at the bottom of the picture. Was that there on the other tape? That. Whoopsies, what's happened to that? Oh, I might have accidentally hit the power switch. The, there's tearing lines on the bottom of the picture there. But I don't know if that's on the tape or not because, yeah, tape of dubious origins. I don't know what recorded that a very long time ago. Similarly with this, this is from Germany. So it will be the German language version, I guess. I don't know. Someone from work just gave me the massive pile of tapes that they'd brought over from Germany. Now oh, we can't tell because that's a widescreen thing, but if we look carefully there are some lines dancing around. I guess that doesn't matter because on your good old analog TV it's got an overscan anyway, so you wouldn't see that stuff happening at the bottom of the screen because it would be off the bottom edge. Alright, so that's good. We got a machine, another thing working. Now what we want to do is grab the other mechanism, the one that we pulled the cassette loading thing off of, and put that back together. We'll have to get this head out and stick that in there because we destroyed that other head that was in very bad shape. And then we'll have a look at timing the mechanism, mechanism back, and then try that in this position here. So let's get that ready. I'll just turn that thing off, and now we'll pull all this stuff out again. Don't reach in that hole because there's a live fuse. Make sure you unplugged it first. So pull off all this stuff. Guess we'll do that from that end this time. Ah oh, yes, we still haven't undone that grounding wire. I'm gonna have to undo that now. Okay, we're gonna put this aside. Get the head out of this. So this is working electronics. So we'll keep that. Now I've got to borrow the head from this mechanism. As you see, the audio cables were going through that thing there, which was quite difficult to undo when. Yeah, because they're quite thick. Uh, shielded cables. Salvage ahead. Uh, grab it by the vat, which is probably not recommended. But anyway, and so there's quite a lot of wires that go to this board here. Five of them go onto the mode switch. That will be the dew sensor, which is up there. Then there's a resistor. There's something there. That is only that. That is only that. That wire only goes to there. Then there is... Oh, well, there's provision for extra things. So there's a an IR sensor there and a reflective wheel. Oh, when it's in the other mode, when the cap stand's running, there's a disc with... a, a wheel with alternate reflectors and uh, absorbers, black, there, and so there's a thing there with an infrared light and a light receiver to tell when it's rotating and probably what direction, no I think that's, no that's it's just a single receiver so it's just measures rotation. Then there's the pickup from the record prevention switch which is in the corner there, that comes from, there's the back of the switch and then there's just a wire single wire which plugs onto a header. That's it on there. Then there's the end sensors LED there which goes up through the tape and then that shines out through that hole or that hole when the clear leader starts coming out and that gets picked up by light sensors there and there so that it knows when the tape has come to an end and it will stop before the tape gets ripped out of the housing. There's also another switch there, a slide switch, so that knows the position. So those go on that flat cable. And then there's the solenoid down there which tricks the, trips the mechanism into different modes by clicking that lever, which is already pushed at the moment because it's in its fully eject position, which is 
completely one end of the mechanism travel so as you load a tape that will come in and load up and go through the different modes okay so this is good mechanism we'll put that aside and we'll grab the other one which is that here is another mechanism ah but we have to get that some kind of bug hanging off of it we've got to get the that belt and that other thing that idler pulley thing so we're going to steal them off of this one which is where we also stole the head from steal this off from and the belt that's good that's all we need there now we got to get this running again get all of this back together by putting the mechanism in the right position with this and then putting this on and just seeing if that works and uh, should we mount the head up yet or should we just clean some of this i don't know if it really makes much difference not really much point cleaning a thing that's probably not going to work just for fun but might as well while we're here while it's accessible wipe down some of the stuff a bit just so we don't wreck the tape too much by putting it into a dirty machine a dirty mechanism okay it mostly looks in good shape now we might as well get the head mounted up while we can easily do that and then we'll put that belt on the bottom yeah i wonder if i had a go at that before because you've got to take this off and then pull that off and you know, get in there to get everything organized into the right positions Okay, now we get that belt sorted out. So these posts will hold so we're not squishing the head down when we put this upside down. Yeah, this might be in vain though, because we can't get it timed. We'll have to do it again anyway. Is that right? Don't break, it's lifted up. Wondering if that if that is a problem. Okay, well, let's just put this back on and then we'll just check that. Yes, yeah, so you remember the other one that wheel was fully flogged out for some reason. Not really sure why. And yeah, so that's a little tab that lifts up the brake there. I'm not sure if that's right though. Is it really supposed to be bent up that high? That looks too high. I have a feeling that that is not riding properly. So now it must be in the play mode. Play or... Well, it's in the rewind fast forward mode where it engages in these spindles. So that can put it into a different mode. There we go. So we're going into play mode now. That's almost play, and then finally now we're in play mode, nearly, yeah, although it's not driving the reels, which is interesting. Oh yeah, so that breaks on now, something's not right, yeah, uh, maybe this mechanism isn't timed properly because it should be driving these reels once it gets into that play mode ah yes that's right that's what we experienced when the move were... i remember now because i remember this noise that grating sound and yeah, so why isn't it engaging properly yes something is messed up with the positioning of this stuff i think there's anything i can do on this side yes, so it works for a very short time then it stops I guess this the pad in there is worn out because there's there'll be we're taking this off there'll be a belt pad type thing oh you gotta take all that stuff off yeah there you, that thing that felt pad there then drives that Oh, maybe it just wasn't pushed down 
far enough. We could we gotta get out the manual right now and have a look at the exploded view and we'll just make sure that that has been assembled correctly. Uh, we'll just go and look for that. I should have got the manuals out before starting, but anyway. I'll get it out and then we'll take a look and see. But my suspicion is that that clapped out uh, retaining clip might, oops, might not have been pushing that down hard enough. Uh, I think it might be wrecked because there is a crack in that plastic there. So it's possible that that is broken. I think something that was supposed to be engaged but it maybe it's pulled out. Okay, well it's gone back. There's two levels to it. That one there that drives the loading mechanism through that double height clutch thing that gets triggered by that lever. And then there's the next layer up which is the one that drives this idler here which I'm guessing that's the one that's involved right now and then there's the a higher layer one which is this one here which I think that one's the one involved with the rewind and fast forward and which one's being used is determined by these little levers here I think that's what it levers which will push this which will prevent that from swinging far enough so that it uses this one instead something like that maybe that wasn't inserted properly in that because you're probably supposed to pull all this stuff off in order to get this in there oops, no, it popped apart popped apart if that's a problem whether it's supposed to stay in together or not by itself yeah, because it's got to go in there which, yeah, that can't easily go on there, that's annoying yeah, if that, if that gets left, it's going to pop itself apart again. Just put that there, get a manual and we'll take a look at it. Okay, it's a bit weird. They don't, they don't actually tell you anything about that assembly. They're just treating that thing there as one whole unit with all that stuff attached to it. Which is strange. Because they only sh they show it all together, and then the next is a washer, which is what we see there, that little black one that's stuck to the bottom at the moment, which was on that shaft the last time. And then I've got the next layer down as being this thing here, which they show there, and that's it, because that is the next thing. So they don't they don't specifically go into any details of this, so I guessing this is a one unit and because it's got a crack in it that's now not in the right position maybe it's supposed to go down more than what it was oh oh yeah that's different that's that one but I don't know if they even tell you how to take that off they don't actually go into any detail of the attachment of this part. Well, not that I could see in my fairly brief flick through of the manual. Okay, we're gonna try and... well, can't decide. It. We'll... I need to get this thing back into position, but I'm also wondering if we should try pulling the one off the other mechanism to see what it looks like. Let's see if it's wrecked. We've already stolen the head, so... What are you gonna do? It's all gross and dirty. We've got a toothbrush here. So is this the? Oh, so this is the G20 mechanism. This is the 21, but I'm not expecting there to be any differences. Let's get that clip off. Oh, so that pops apart as well. It also looks cracked. So wrecked that now as well. Is that how you get it in? By doing it with it all in bits like that? I guess so. Seem to work. Okay then, let's do that. So you just kind of pull it apart and mush it in. Yeah, but what I don't know is because that has a, a ridge down the side of it which goes into a ridge on that. 
how do you get that lined up properly? And I guess if we line it up with that, and then do the same on here, then it will just go together and everything will be perfect. Oh yeah, look at that. Went together and everything is perfect. Still doesn't work. Yeah, so it was in the play position, it still is. And the problem is it's not engaging with that stuff. So let's do the same thing with the other one. And get it into the play position and see what it does. And go through the procedure of loading a tape, but without actually having a tape. So we have to hold these clips in the right positions to rip through. Okay. So we're loading it. And bringing the controller down. I think we're done. We in the yeah, we're in the play position now. And yeah, look at that and it grabs perfectly the supply and take out reels move properly as you expect. And very light back tension on that. Anyway, we're not worrying about that at the moment. So that grabs perfectly. So why doesn't this one? That's what we need to work out. See if we can solve a problem. Now that we've got a working one and you can see it perfectly grabs each side and turns them. Uh, it's got grease all over it. Because uh, I touched in there where the slide mechanisms are. Anyway, so what's different about that? Can we tell which one is it using? The top one or the bottom one? Ah, so it's that one, the one that flaps around, which isn't doing it on this. I'll just pause this for a while while I work this out, what's actually going on. So I'm not really sure what it is. I was wondering if pulled the things off again, whether it's that roller there. So that's the one that's doing the engagement. If that is slightly stiffer to turn, then it will have more willingness to pull itself to the sides. But it doesn't feel more or less stiff, although it's really hard to know. So I was thinking perhaps we can get that out and put the other one on, but in order to do that we're going to have to take this other piece out. But in order to do that we've got to take all that stuff off. Let's see if we can just lift it up enough that it gets out of the way. Rough. Okay, we got that out. Thinking maybe that's wrecked somehow. Still seems to do the right thing. It's under tension. Don't know. Should we swap it? We'll just swap them over and then we'll see if that made a difference. No, that screw came out completely. Then a shaft screwdriver to get those in better. Hopefully that stuff aligns itself properly. Okay, let's see what happens if we put this back in. We've got that washer. Some crud in there. And then we've got this stuff. And make sure you put the stuff back in properly. And then we've got this stuff. And we'll get that lined up. So it should be able to go into there. Oh, it's driving now. Wow. Okay, so this is wrecked. Somehow. Maybe I should have looked at it a bit better. Look, looked at that one a bit better, but... Anyway, that, for some reason, doesn't do the business. Even though it feels to me like it should, but... It is a bit weird that that spring seems to be just wandering around. Maybe, maybe it's clicked itself out of position. Don't know. Doesn't really make any sense. Let's just put it into this mechanism and see if the problem follows it back into this mechanism. Then maybe it's something that's such a critical amount of turning or not turning, like the the resistance to turning that. It feels the same to me, but it's actually having a, an effect on it. Get that thing back in there. Ugh. There's all these washes and things involved with that. Okay, it seems to be driving. No, it's not. It's intermittent. Well, I can feel it grab for a while and then stop. Oh, I don't want to pull it apart anymore. I was going to say, there must be is, are the teeth worn somewhere on this. doesn't look like it. Anyway, oh, well, uh, maybe we should put this together properly. Anyway, let's let's put this. Oh, 
I suppose I should put it back together just so that I don't lose the parts, but the parts don't work, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Anyway, we'll just put that back on. We'll get this out of the way. Now we've got this presumably in a working state. Put this out of the way. Just check this again, just to make sure we're not making things up. Yes, it drives both directions now. We can replace the belt and... Oh, that brakes on. Nice No way the brakes on. Seems to be working. Okay, now what we're going to do is get the timing sorted out so we can put the cassette compartment thing back into position and hopefully have it in the right position. Let's go. So this has to go in the unload direction the whole way to um to stop which is probably that and I'm going to look so there's a procedure here which is reinstallation of the cassette compartment so press the change lever and turn it and turn the capstan motor counterclockwise until the mechanism placed into the eject position and until the mechanism comes to the final position okay so we're going to do it further than that anti-clockwise Okay, so it's, it's stuck now, but what it means is that that rod off of that lever has come into the end of its travel on that gear there. So it's now in the fully end position. To use the photocopy, I can't want to photocopy because I don't want to wreck that. That manual is already peeling itself apart. So turn it until it's in the eject position fully until final position and keep it in this position memorize the position of the marking or hole on the connection gear which is this one and turn the capstan motor to counterclockwise so that the marking or hole connection gear return to just one rotate back and keep in this position okay so it's got to be exactly one rotation back and at the moment Let's get in here a bit closer. So at the moment we can see the first, well, or last, depending on which way you're doing it. To the right is nothing, to the left is a dot, and it's pointing v directly vertically up. So we've got to go one rotation back from that position, which is there, straight up. The hole that we're talking about is that one there, which is an alignment hole. You can see there's a hole on that mode switch there. The hole that they're talking about in the various bits and pieces to get it set up properly. Oh, you can't see that anyway, but yes, there's holes. Holes in gears. Okay, so I've turned it exactly one rotation back. And yeah, they show that there with that, that one vertically. Now, and keep in this position, slide the cassette holder just a little so that the second tip of rack A, so they're talking about this thing, come to the center of rectangular hole. So that the second tip of the rack comes to the second to the hole. So there's the hole that they're talking about, and there's the rack, and we've got to slide it in so that the second, okay so it's just a real little bit, so that's fully out, fully eject, and we're pulling it till the second tip is in line with that hole. Okay, and it says remove the screws. It says remove those screws. Why do we have to do that? Remove two screws, carefully remove the top plate from the compartment so that the connection gear and rack can be seen when reinstalling. Install slowly to the chassis so that the second tip comes into the fifth slot of the connection gear. Okay, so the Fifth slot is the one just above the hole, so it's got to go into there, the second tooth, which is the one that's visible through the hole. And that hole there goes over the top of that post there. I guess we don't need to take it apart. I don't want to do that because you've got to pull this wire out. Oh, 
let's just do it and we'll see what happens. So there should be a gap there, and that's what we're going for. And I guess that's why they want you to take it apart so you can see what's going on. What I don't know what's happening is what is that stuff there doing? Okay, I think that's done. Okay, let's screw this in and then we'll give it a go. Got an extra circlet from something. Oh, I didn't even put the circlet back in or it fell off of that bottom spindle thing. Okay, let's do that after I screwed this back down. So now it says reinstall the top plate, tighten the screws, reconnect the cable. So we've got to work out now what, I think they're like M2 or M2.5 red screws. These guys maybe. Well, this one is at the end. That looks too long. There's another one. It's also long. There's another one that which is not long. Maybe, oh yeah, okay. The short ones are going at this side. Then there are some long ones that were hard to get to. Because we've got to put, try this in. See that there goes down into a, a catch so that you can't load without a tape. This tape holds it in position. And then there's one on this side which you release. Now we can see the other two screw holes and the other thicker ones. Because there's more plastic there. I'll put those in. Now, the final thing which I forgot from before, which unless it pinged itself off, is to put that little split washer around there to hold that thing in position. I think we're ready to test this mechanism and we've possibly solved the problem with it. Back to the eject position. Dust and fluff everywhere. Anyway, let's put this back in the chassis and wire it up, clean the head and we'll try it. Yeah, whether that works or not, that will probably be the end for us today because yeah, we've done some exciting things. Bring that chassis back in. wires hooked up first. Yeah, we didn't get into doing that stuff, maybe we'll try that on another video because we're going to encounter this mechanism again several times when we look at other VCRs based in this system. And if not we'll just come back and do one for fun. You join up everything. Head motor. Head amp. The whatever that was, the capstan motor stuff. The loading cassette compartment connector. The that thing. The mechanism. The miscellaneous bits and pieces connector. The audio control head connector. I think that's us. Everything's hooked up. Maybe we'll just go ahead and this back so it's out of the way. Great. And I just noticed one thing why that, that flex ribbon thing that goes to the conceit compartment, that's why it's mounted because it gets squished down roughly by this board if it's not exactly lined up right. Let's just clean the head and then we'll test it. That's in there. Okay, that's good. Would have just been a few fingerprints anyway. Power this up. Video signal. Put our favourite tape in. thing turned on. Yeah, was that a happy noise or not? No. Okay, let's rewind. It might be unhappy about something. Okay, it's happy to do that. Let's see if it will go into play mode. It's making a weird noise. 
I wonder if there's an alignment issue with the tape. Oh, yes, there is an alignment issue there. Because it's creasing the edge of the tape. Yeah, that's not very really good. Yeah, it's folding over the the top edge of the tape there. I wonder why that is. All this stuff is mounted in right. Surely it was bringing the tape down low enough in the mechanism. Yeah, that could be a thing that would happen if the if the alignment was one gear off, one tooth off, that it hasn't pulled the tape down far enough. Oh, no. It doesn't feel like it could go down further. Oh, okay. It's happy now. I Something must have got messed up on that first load, which I don't know. It did behave a bit weirdly that first time, but it doesn't appear to be doing anything wrong with the tape now. And yeah, the, LED, the LEDs are strobing that head, so it's, it looks like it's running at a weird speed. There's multiple different LEDs. Oh, look, the tape ended. Or... Okay. Oh man, was that ads that someone had paused through, stopped through? Maybe. Anyway, let's load it one more time to have a look and see if that was a one-off or is it going to mess the tape up again. It's possibly still a bit wrecked because there are some creasing there. Yeah, so maybe... Did we screw something up and get it one tooth off? I don't know, that's hard to... Yeah. It's definitely pulled it down. I don't, don't feel like it could have gone down further. I wonder if these posts are on the limit of the alignment for whatever reason. The picture is pretty good and stable now. Probably because we've warmed this up from using it on and off. And yeah, the capacitors are becoming happy again from warming up, getting some use. And the picture's stabilized because of that. It is still making a clicking noise, a very faint clicking noise. Still, well, it, it is making a faint clicking noise. I'm surprised that the heads don't have an issue the vibration issue, so there must be a different design. We'll have a look at that soon, maybe at some point. We'll take apart the other heads in the NV180 machines and compare it to that one we pulled apart. Oh, something's happening. I could hear it struggle for some reason just then. I'm wondering if it's one click out. Oh, there you go. It's an NVG20 mechanism in an NVG21 machine. We swapped over that little idler gear thingamabob, and now that mechanism is working. So that's exciting, good result perhaps. Probably means we could put this back into the G20 machine and it will be all Happy to work. Problem is we've only got one power supply that works. Anyway, hopefully that was interesting. And next time, well maybe not next time, but coming up, I just found these when I was digging out some tapes before. What is this? Something very exciting and not very common. And we'll take a look at that at some point. I've got a bunch of machines and perhaps even this, the actual thing that's called VCR format. 
Anyway, that's it for today. We got this machine or this mechanism up and running by replacing a part and had to play around with it. And well, yeah, I don't know what video is coming up next, but it will be something else interesting, hopefully. That's it for now.